and welcome. Uh, today we are going to be looking at the Thistle Big Green Commercial Hercules Slim Back. Uh, I've seen these showing up online for about a year or so now and I just haven't been able to find any good videos on them or honestly even the specs, but I was really interested in it because I like the idea of small but maneuverable commercial vacuums. So I went ahead and bought one. It cost me about $75. Um, I originally wanted to do an unboxing video and kind of go over all that. However, the camera I was using, I don't know what happened, but the footage ended up being really crummy. So yeah, starting over using my phone. Uh, so I do apologize, not able to do an unboxing. However, it's pretty straightforward. The box is very small, it comes in two parts. The handle is separated from the main unit. All you have to do is use a flathead and screw in one bolt and it's connected. Set that down. Comes with one spare bag, pretty decent sized bag, and one bag installed in the vacuum, so a total of two bags. You get a short user's manual. Move that out of the way. You get two different floor head options. They are just friction fit, they are standard one and a quarter inch attachments. You have a bare floor only tool with some nice natural bristles, uh, a little bit of castle cut in here, and two rubber rollers. And then on the carpet bare floor tool, you have litter pickers, that's a standard just plastic base plate. And then if you push this pedal down, it'll click into place. You get some uh, hard plastic bristles with some small castle cuts, as well as a rubber squeegee. Uh, there are also two rollers, but these rollers are just hard plastic. I don't know if they're not marring, but they're not rubberized. Then when we get to the main unit itself, there is a 20-foot cord. Get a little cord wrap on the back here. Go ahead and pull this off. It's actually a really decent, thick, sturdy feeling cord. It doesn't feel flimsy or anything, so that's kind of nice. Pop that back. You have your rocker on off switch, so you have low power, which is a 600 watt mode, off, and then high power running at 1100 watts, I believe. So pretty basic two speed motor. You do have an exhaust filter right here. It's nothing special as far as filtration goes. It's just a you know, filter meant to catch carbon dust exhausted by the motor. It is a bypass unit, so, or sorry, not a bypass. It's a pass-through unit, so the air you suck up is going to go through the motor. And then we open the back compartment here. We have the bag. I did run it a little bit already, so there is that. You have a nice gasket around the bag housing. There's a small little pre-motor filter just meant to keep bigger debris out of the filter. You just slot the bag in. And while there's no, nothing on this side of the vacuum to hold the bag in place while it's operating, there is a small plastic nub on the inside of the bag cover that functions from the best is what I can assume to hold the bag in place while it's operating so you don't have dirt leaking out around the bag seal and getting to the motor. All right, now that's back together. If we look at the back, there's another cover plate here. And if you open that up, you actually get with this vacuum a very small crevice tool and a very small upholstery brush with lint pickers. Um, surprising that that actually comes with this. It didn't, they didn't, or this one didn't have to provide those, but they did. And this just clicks right out of place. All right, so what I've done I've got a small bowl of a mixture of flour, rice, and salt. I'm just going to sprinkle that across both the carpet and the floor, see how both the nozzles perform. I also have a suction gauge and an anemometer. We can look at the suction or water lift of this vacuum as well as the airflow of this vacuum, and hopefully that'll be enough information to provide anyone else that's been looking at these enough data to decide whether or not they want one. 
All right, first up, I'm going to be testing the carpet nozzle in carpet mode. Um, there's a lot of material down. You can see it just at the bottom of the screen. Normally, you're not going to be picking up this much material in one concentrated spot. However, this is just kind of a stress test to see how the vacuum behaves. I will be performing both of these tests in maximum power mode, um, just because that's generally what most people are going to use. However, I'm willing to imagine that low power mode would do all right as well. So, if you have headphones on, you might want to turn your volume down. see it very well but this did snow plow the rice it did a pretty decent job and again this is just straight suction there's no brushes or anything but there's a lot of this rice here that did just get snow plowed again you're not going to be really uh, picking up this much bulk in one spot at a time overall it didn't do bad all right I'm gonna go ahead and extend the bristles I'm going to use it in bare floor mode. I'm just going to do this spot right next to the carpet. Alright. As expected, this, this head, as with any bare floor head, it did snow plow a little bit where there wasn't the castle cutting move some of this back forward. I apologize for my camera placement. Um, it snow plowed a little bit. The rice kind of trapped some of the flour in the salt, but it still overall did a very good job picking everything up. Um, so that being said, I'm going to go ahead and switch back. <laughs> or switch not back. Switch over to the bare floor only tool. This floor, or this tool is designated specifically for bare floors, so hopefully it will perform a little bit better. Alright, surprisingly that head did not, uh, did not snow plow nearly as much, and what it did snow plow was pretty much just the rice. There's not really any flour or salt or anything left. So both of the nozzles work fairly well on, uh, on any kind of surface. All right, so getting everything set up here. So here I have my, here we have the anemometer. We have the suction gauge. So we're gonna test both those. And I do have a paper cone for the anemometer. As far as I've been able to tell, with my anemometer, to get the C proper CFM number, what I do is I take the number that will show up on the screen, I multiply it by 0 0.020699, and that will give me the CFM as we're used to seeing it labeled on any kind of vacuum product if you're looking at it online. I uh, sincerely apologize for that. And one moment, sorry. So yeah, we're gonna test uh, both the CFM as well as the suction on both low and high power and kind of just come up with, an, or see what the numbers are that we come up with. All right, so I'm gonna clear this, set this guy up, okay. Function. All right, and I am going to hit this max button so that it'll just save the highest number we achieve. That way, I don't have to guess at what I hit. So. Looks like we had a max of 2,163. So if we take that 2,163, multiply it by 0 0.020, or yeah, 
0.020699, sorry. Looks like we get an airflow of about 44.7 or 0.8 um, cubic feet per minute. That's pretty respectable, I guess. It's It feels not terrible, I guess. I'm saying guess a lot. All right, I'm gonna clear that, clear this. And now I'm going to go ahead and do it on high power. Trying to make sure I had a good seal. Now again, these numbers are kind of arbitrary. Sorry about that. There you go. Uh, just because I don't know if I'm getting perfect seals. So this is all just kind of to see how, like, get close guesstimates. So if we take 2,648, multiply that by 0 0.020699, get about 54, 55-ish CFM. So those numbers aren't terrible. There's about a 10 CFM difference between low and high power, so it's not bad, I guess. All right, so we're gonna look at the water lift now. So the water lift is just like the actual suction power. Um, this is the number that's important if you're trying to pick up heavier objects, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot more sand and grit and maybe small pebbles or whatnot versus just dust. Um, this would also be the number that, uh, the numbers that you would use to determine whether or not you could hook up a turbo nozzle to this and have it work. So you're looking at it upside down. So we've got 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, which I doubt we're going to get that high. Um, I'm going to test it on low and high power. So here we go. This is going to get a little noisy. All right, so uh, that was low power. We got up to here, which that is actually 60 inches of water lift. That's fairly impressive from this little vacuum. Uh, Kind of curious now is what high is going to provide us so let's let's go ahead and find out so we're going to turn on on high <laughs> Woo! all right so we got up to in the high 80s we actually got to about 86 to 88 inches of water lift that from this small of a little vacuum, it's pretty darn impressive. All right, well, I know that was a short little bit of tests. Uh, again, not a little super scientific. I guess the most accurate one would be the water lift. Not able to guarantee that I've sealed it for the CFM for the airflow. Um, and I don't really have a way of measuring the filtration quality of this vacuum, but considering that it just has like kind of a regular uh, exhaust filter, I wouldn't say that this is going to be your best option for allergy sufferers, but for a small, affordable little commercial vacuum, this thing's kind of strong. It produces a significant amount of water lift, it has decent airflow, and the nozzles seem pretty decent. If you're vacuuming just small spaces or doing quick pickup throughout the day and need something small, maneuverable, and fairly quiet, I mean, it's definitely a little bit noisy, but it's not bad compared to a lot of commercial vacuums. Uh, this isn't this isn't bad, mind you. I paid seventy five dollars for this. Seventy five dollars for a machine that, heck, if you got a turbo nozzle for this, it could probably outperform a lot of the big box store uprights that you can buy. So yeah, um, it may be a commercial vacuum, but if you're in a, a studio apartment, and you have a small house, or just need something for around the house quick pickups, this could be a really good option. My only. Uh, gripe is that one I don't have a dusting nozzle I do a lot of dusting personally but if you're not one to use like the extra attachments very much this could be a pretty solid little vacuum so hopefully if you've been looking at these and wondering if they're any good personally I think it's a fairly decent little vacuum it's just not meant for allergy sufferers and that's about it so
thank you very much for your time and hope you found this useful.